Hello there and welcome back to City Line. Yep, in between the breaks, I am loving on our guests because I haven't seen them for so long. This next person, I want to say first off, a huge thank you for filling in with me or filling in for me when I was on vacation and also wasn't feeling well. Chris Surface, you are a co-chair delight and you are also of course the managing artistic director of Tacoma Little Theater. Welcome back my friend. Thank you so much man it's always a joy to be here. It's great to have you here. And, and in person. In person <laughs> and sock cam. Okay oh. put them up. Okay. So we have uh, let's see if we can get a shot of that. We have the Golden Girls go. socks and I asked Chris if he could be one of the Golden Girls who would he be and what did you say? I'm a Dorothy. You're a Dorothy. You are a Dorothy. Absolutely. I think I'm, I'm kind of a Blanche. You know, I, I kind of like that whole Southern thing going. Um, so, Chris, thank you for reminding us of Sock Cam. <laughs> so, let's talk about this season. Um, the last time I drove by um, and actually had a chance to slow down because there was construction there, it was a chorus line was back on. And I heard Chorus Line blew the doors off of Tacoma Little Theater. So congratulations on that. Thank you. It was so wonderful to bring that show back to life. Yes. Two years after it had shut down, uh, most of the cast came back and we had a great time. Audiences loved it. And it was so nice to see the theater full of applauding people again. I bet. So let's talk about um, the happiest song plays last. I saw that a couple days ago as I was... I was headed down to Stadium Thriftway for my baked chicken, and I thought, that is a title I don't know. So, Chris, tell us about it. The Happy Song Plays Last is the third in a trilogy of plays that Quira Algeria Hudas wrote. Um, she's also the playwright for In the Heights, which will be opening. Oh, yes. Uh, that Lynn manuel Miranda worked with her. Yes. Together. So she wrote the lyrics and uh, the book for that show. Um, she's a brilliant playwright. This is the story of Yaz, who is a... Uh, music professor turned running the soup kitchen in her neighborhood to make sure that the neighbor's taken care of, and her cousin Elliot, who is, was a, is a soldier, was a soldier, and is overseas helping film a war docudrama right as the Egyptian uprising's happening in 2011. And we've got some and pictures? So, some pictures, and so we see the story told in two places. We see it told from Yaz's home in Philly, and then we see it told from the desert with Elliot and the film crew and then it comes together in the end with both of them in the same location again. It is a fascinating drama of looking into two people's lives connected by different events. There's a picture of them Skyping back and forth, which is a lot of fun I love that. to see on stage. It's a brilliant cast, and it's also a partner project with the University of Washington Tacoma and Toy Boat Theater. So um, it's something that we're starting to do. We're actually gonna do another partner project with UWT's theater department next year as well to give their students a chance to work in the community and be on stages outside the educational system to see what goes into a production outside of the education system. Wow. And we've had a brilliant crew of students from their program here. And Maria Tana, Tanya Vandis Becerra Weingarten, who plays Yaz in the show, is also the professor at UWT in their theater department. So it's a great synergy that we have happening. So Chris, I mean, when I think about UWT, I think two things. One, it, it's, it used to be um, the little college that could, now it is the big college that does. What was it like working with them in terms of a partner project? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's the, it's the right thing as we, you know, we're in the community already. And for them to get a little bit more exposure to say, UWT has a theater program and it's going to go places. Yeah. And it's so wonderful that they're investing in the performing arts for their students and for the community as well because it's a great partnership for all the organizations in town to know that UWT has a great theater department now. Uh, and you know, I, okay, so I got to put in a little, little plug there. I want to see some Shakespeare in the park and I want to see some tap dancing in Tolleson Square. So <laughs> I hope that you can make that happen. We will see what we can do. <laughs> so let's talk about, speaking of, of different places where you can watch theater, what are your current COVID policies, Chris, and protocols? We currently, our pro protocols for this show, The Happy Song Plays Last, is we do require vaccine or proof and negative COVID test, and masks are required while in the theater. This is something that we review at the end of each production, and we kind of stay in line with what the industry standards are. Um, Broadway just dropped their vaccine mandate this ah. month, and at our board meeting this week, we actually decided that we would be dropping our vaccine requirement at the end of the run of this show. Okay. Um, and we just kind of review things as they go along 
for what is the next step for this. Um, our thing is that theater was the first to close down and the last to reopen. Yep. So some people say, stop being scared, stop being fearful, but we're also being cautious yes. because we don't want to have to close down again and we still want to bring live theater to our community. Absolutely. Arts and sciences can get along. Um, and at this point, you know, the, the, the lead role is science. We have to watch what it does. I mean, we hear about, you know, uh, correspondence dinners in Washington, D.C., where lots of people got sick. So I think you are wise to be better safe than sorry, mm -hmm. because you have people who are on that stage who can also get sick. Um, and so it's not just those beautiful people in that gorgeous auditorium, it's also the people who are making the magic happen. Very true. Um, what's the biggest challenge for TLT and arts in general in Tacoma right now? It's bringing it back into people's everyday life. Mm. Um, we never went anywhere, we were still there, but reminding them that we want you to come back into the theater. We want to see you again. We want to see your smiling faces, your crying faces sometimes, depending on if yes. it's a sad show. But we want to see you back and experiencing what live theater is. We've had great crowds uh, through the start of the season. We just continue to see great things happening. So really, it's get out there. If you feel comfortable getting back in the theater, go see a show. Absolutely. All of the theaters in town would love to see you. Yeah, yes, they would. Um, is it true that you announced your 104th season with the happiest song plays last? We did. We, <gasps> we did. We announced the season. I will give you the scoop. Okay. Because I know you like it. You haven't Spill heard it yet. You haven't heard him yet either, which is No, great. I haven't. So we've been, uh, people have been asking a long time for us to bring a title back, and I know you love this title. So we are going to open with Still Magnolias. Ah! <laughs> oh, I almost screamed. Glad I didn't blow the microphone out. <laughs> I knew you'd like that one. Then for the October season, we always try and do something a little more mysterious and a little more mis dark based. And yes. so they've created a new ad adaptation of Agatha Christie novel that has never been on stage before. And Murder on the Orient Express will take to our stage wow. for October of this year. Then for the holidays, you asked for another one to bring back. And we said, OK, we'll do it. And A Christmas Story is back on our stage. So you will shoot your eye out with the Red Rider BB gun. That's right. I will. For January, we're doing a great show called Po' Boy Tango, which is all about food. Ooh, so, so Po' be, Boy as in the sandwich. As in the sandwich and a few other things, too. So there are kitchens on stage, and uh, you will have some fun watching that show Ooh. create food. Um, I have a Gallagher hit on that. No, Gal no Gallagher. No Gallagher. <laughs> no, no water is exploding. <laughs> Then for our UWT partner project for the big musical next year, we're doing Rock of Ages. So tease that 80s hair up and get ready for some classic hair bands going through. I love that. Then uh, the show after that is Significant Other, which is in uh, was on Broadway in 2017. It's about a 30-something man whose friends are all getting married, and he's finding out he doesn't have anybody in his life. And Ooh, so it's, okay. it's a comedy, but it's also got some great dramatic moments. And that's the one I'm directing next year, so I'm excited for that. Then we close out with a Stephen King novella brought to the stage, mm. and it's The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, my God. You know, I, I have these little bucket lists in terms of things that are important in my life. And if I'm going to have a close relationship with you, you better have either read the book, seen the play, or seen the movie of Shawshank Redemption because it is, it is one for the ages. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so wonderful. What is coming up for our young actors? Because we're already past spring break, which I didn't realize until we were in the great green room talking. So we're talking about right now um, summer camps that you're registering for. We are. Summer camp is open and registering. Classes are starting to fill up. We have the Lion King Jr. Oh. We have the Little Mermaid Jr. And then we also have for our teen group, our 13 to 18 year olds, a new treatment of Freaky Friday that was on the Disney Channel a few years ago, and they turned it into a stage show. The music is delightful, and it's a lot of fun. So we hope that we'll see you in the audience for those. Oh, absolutely. So how can people help right now? I know that, that you're always looking for people to volunteer, but there's also the Give Big is going on. We right are on now. the tail end of the Give Big, which is a Washington-wide uh, giving initiative for nonprofits. We, I, I will say it was something that took us by surprise. We did have... A great donation come in last night late in the game, which was brilliant and just made our night and made everything wonderful. But we are still recovering. We are still coming back from a pandemic. So if if it is in your heart and your pocketbook and you feel like giving a dollar or a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, we won't complain. Um, it goes to help do great things in our community. Absolutely. Speaking of that, um, who do we need to thank for those great things in our community? Uh, the community, number one. Yeah, there Our we great go. patrons who are out there, um, a great board of directors, a great staff, great cast and crews. It takes a lot to make live theater happen. 
and the fact that we were able to come back and we are continuing to do it. And we still face those challenges, but we overcome them and we will be there for 104 more years. Oh my gosh, I mean, I, I, I remember as we were sheltering in place, you were still putting the finishing touches on the remodel. Um, and if that wasn't just enough to add to um, the pandemic, I don't know what was, but you guys just graciously just sailed on through and provided those virtual classes when students didn't know how they were gonna get a creative outlet because school was not in session. So um, I wanna say thank you to you and your team as a parent for um, giving these children a place to put all of that emotion during that time. And also thank you as a community member because you guys just don't stop. So um, thank you, Chris, so much for always being here for us. And thank you also for filling in with me when I needed it. Anytime. Thank you so I much, Amanda. I love that. Corinne Candy will be in the house in just a second. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.